Welcome to another little episode of Orchids in the Dark. Let's see what we've got going on. I am sure we're going to find some gems hidden in the darkness, but probably some washouts as well, because the last video I was quite surprised that not all the colors came through beautifully on all the orchids, so it could be a hit or a miss. And I can already see the blooms through here. This is just so bizarre. Anyway, never mind. Let's put on the light and see who we have. Ta-da! Hmm. Okay, this is Epicatlia renemarquez crossed with Dimarandra emarginata, which normally, during daylight, has much more hints of a light green, sort of a pastel green on the petals and sepals with a blush of pink as the bloom ages. Hmm, seems a little bit washed out, wouldn't you say? I can't really see much of that beautiful pale green. The lip, the column, the nose, everything, that stands out pretty well. A little bit of the blush of pink can be detected, but other than that, hmm, I'm not really feeling it. As a great, great candidate for orchids in the dark, it loses a lot, a lot of detail, unfortunately. Huh. Okay, well, there you go. Epicatlia renemarquez crossed with Dimerandra imarginata. Tried, tested, and a little bit of a fail for orchids in the dark when it comes to the wow spectacular reaction. Okay, if you're still with me, thank you so very, very much. I seriously don't want to keep repeating washed out blooms. There's only one way to find out. Let's have a look-see what the focus is trying to figure out there. And you can see some beady little eyes staring back at us. <laughs> That's better. Okay, that makes up for whatever we just saw with the René Marquez. Oh my goodness! Hi! <laughs> Phalaenopsis Pink Tung Bronze Age delivers. Delivers better than she delivers on camera during the day. Pinkton Bronze Age, beautifully named, especially now at night, we can appreciate the little, very faint yellow golden bronze striations in the petals and sepals with that little fairy dust sprinkle. Like, you know, you put a touch of summer blush on your face and shoulders just to have a bit of that glow in your beautiful cocktail dress as you go out at night. That is what I think of when I look at these blooms in the dark. They are gorgeous. My goodness, even the pink of the lip really, really resonates with the shine of the flashlight. Ah, oh, she makes up for what we just saw as the opening of the video. <laughs> Should have started with this one and we would have started off with a bang. Normally she has a gorgeous fragrance during the day, but she is not fragrant at night. Her fragrance during the day is like just very, very fruity, delicious, sugary skittles. Not a specific color, but the whole handful of skittles into your mouth all in one go. That is her fragrance. Yes, I am loving this. I am loving this. She doesn't look real. And of course, one bloom has to go upside down, even though I didn't even move her from her location. The light is coming from this way. There's always got to be one, but at least she's in bloom. I did not get to enjoy these blooms last year. She's looking amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it when the focus is trying to find something. Clearly, clearly, it can see there is something in the dark here, as we can as well. And here we are again. The white is picking up quite, quite well. Let's have a look, see if this is going to be a washout. <laughs> Nope, no washout. This is Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. Can you believe it? She is still in bloom. Absolutely amazing. Oh my goodness. She comes out so much better despite being white. Against the flashlight, there is no washout. Oh my word, I am astounded. No, I didn't believe this would happen. I actually was thinking we were going to go back to a René Marquez kind of example of everything washed out. This is spectacular. I love how the very, very light brown pinstripes are showing through the petals and sepals. 
That is a detail that is not easily detected during the day because one is so distracted by the deep, deep burgundy lines of the lip and throat. That pinstripe reminds me of the dress that Julia Roberts wore in Pretty Woman when she went shopping on Rodeo Drive. I don't know if you know that scene where she looks all smart, fancy with all her shopping bags going up and down, going back to the shop that didn't serve her first and then said, big mistake, big mistake. That scene, I love that scene because that is such a classic. And this is what I see when I see the pinstripe on the white petals and sepals. I love it. And there are some sparkles as well. Very, very faint, but they are there. Now we know that Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga has blooms that are super long lasting. So these blooms are also <laughs> still from back in the day. They look much better close up. And I'm still waiting for some spikes to open. Can you believe it? <laughs> but I like, I like the effect. And this was an honest moment, checking for any dust on my leaves. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Messing with the focus. I love it. <laughs> I wish it would do that when you're trying to film and keep things in focus. I wish it would find the focus, but here we are. You can see by the outline of the shape. Not going to make a big deal out of it. Let's see if it's a showstopper. Ooh, almost. <laughs> almost a showstopper. Not too shabby. Phalaenopsis Leodoro. Sweet memory. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yes, I'm liking this. Uh, what I'm not liking is that I'm seeing some white spots and if those are little mealybug crawlers, trust me, they will be gone very, very soon. I cannot see those with the naked eye. I don't know. I sometimes have to get the camera out and pretend I'm taking a video to see what's going on up close with my orchids. And if I see something really beautiful, I just hit record, <laughs> capture it then and there. But this is amazing. This is amazing how deep we can go into that lip and get some real true impressions of the colors and all the markings, all the interest that's going on in there, the spots, the dots, and how the color changes from that purple down to the yellowy orangey fuchsia, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and she also shows her sparkle in the night yeah yeah she could fall into the category of being a showstopper but if you would like to oblige me then we have some more orchids lurking in the dark so shall we leave sweet memory to her vices and let her go back to sleep and let's have a look see what else is hiding out behind the lens in the dark the viewfinder is going absolutely nuts, so shall we save it from its misery? <laughs> Dendrobium tortile. I am not disappointed. I was not expecting to be able to get the contrast here. Huh. I mean, she is gorgeous during the day, don't get me wrong, but I was curious to see what she would look like at night. Really curious. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I just love how the pink spikes are actually coming through so vibrant and so shiny. Yes, this is working for me. I am liking this a lot. What I'm not really seeing, maybe I am not seeing it properly, but at this point, I'm not really seeing the glitter, the shine that the lip has during the day. It's not an obvious shine, but you know, there is some kind of pixie dust effect on that lip. It's not coming through at night with the flashlight. That does surprise me. Oh, but she is beautiful. I love the shininess of the petals and sepals. They have more of that silky, sorry, pure silk kind of shimmer to them. And then you can see also in some of the lips that the detail of the little hairy, the fuzzy kind of texture there as well. Very beautiful, super elegant. What a mess when you look at a bloom on its own and you look at the whole plant it's like, yep, this makes perfect sense. <laughs> but it is from an individual bloom basis, you're like, oh, what are you doing? Where are you going? And why are you all pointing in a different direction? Whereas the light source was always the same direction. <laughs> She's messy, but she has a symmetry all of her own. It just makes perfect sense to me. Dendrobium tortilla, I must say, yeah. 
I'm impressed. I love it. But is it the showstopper? I don't know. You're going to have to let me know in the comments what you consider a showstopper in the series so far. If you say Picat Leo René Marquez, I'm going to be very, very surprised. But hey, everybody has a different taste. So let's go and see if we have a showstopper in the viewfinder up next. I was about to not film this orchid, but after what I saw with the Phalaenopsis Pinked and Bronze Age, oh, I have to see if it works for the Fios as well. Oh. <laughs> okay, for everybody that thought I was joking when I was putting Vaseline on my Fios spikes back in that video to protect my spikes from ants, ta-da! Yes! I could do cartwheels around the patio, but it's too dark and I'm too old. <laughs> but look at this. If I see an ant now, I'm about to faint. There should not be a single ant on the spikes. Nope, I don't see any. <laughs> but isn't she beautiful? Isn't she gorgeous? The Pinkton Bronze Age was the one that convinced me to say, okay, the Fias has similar colors. This has got to be good in contrast with the back of the petals and sepals being so white. Now, many of the blooms are fading, especially on the bottom part, but Fias is just gorgeous. Even as they fade, they go into this bronze mixed up with mustard yellow and browns, and they sort of just fade in a beautiful, graceful way. So I don't normally pick off my Fias blooms prematurely. I let them do their thing. I love this color combination. I am so glad I have changed my mind and decided to give Fias a go at night. It's just a little bit of a tight squeeze in here <laughs> in the blooming alley where she's living. And I'm a little bit of a klutz as well, so it's not a good combination. Nighttime, klutz, tight squeeze. Uh, you can imagine that all sorts of weird things can happen, which I may not be too pleased about next day. But then also in the corner to the left of where this Fias lives is the tortilla that we just saw. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, I am enjoying this. I'm so, so glad that I went and actually got myself set up so I could see this at night. Yes, I'm convinced. She is gorgeous. The Vaseline worked. It was all worth it. It's going to be a headache getting it off the pot. But <laughs> for the last four weeks, I have thoroughly enjoyed to see Fios blooms, pristine Fios blooms, once again in my blooming alley. Yes, you're gorgeous. The prettiest nun I have ever seen apart from Maria. I have high hopes for this orchid. I really, really do. Fingers crossed that it is what I think it's going to be. This orchid during the day makes me weep with joy. Let's see what reaction she gains at night. A moment of silence. Oh, my heart, be still. Oh, my heart, be still. Yes, we are a little bit far away, but I am going to get you in closer. Ah, oh, I had to stay far away for this one because she is so long. There's still a little bit more of her down there. We pretty much have her in shot. So, <laughs> oh my dendrobium of film. For a lot of the year, she is like just bare canes. Just a skeleton of sorts. And then she grows like a mad weed during the year and you have to keep up with watering. And then once a year, she does this. Oh, my heart be still. This is gorgeous. I'm really trying to not shake with my hand right now. I'm trying to get as close as possible without losing focus, just so that we can see if we can identify the same traits that she shows when the sun shines on her during the day, because she just lights up and sparkles like with fairy lights, pixie dust, any kind of glitter that you threw at her, it's stuck on the petal sepals, the lip, it's all over her. And I'm hoping to capture this detail with these night shots. Ah, almost. Almost. Let's get into that throat every once in a while. My hand is starting to shake. I am so sorry. It's just like this orchid, she just, you know, you step out in the morning onto the patio and you just want to weep with joy. This is the reaction that I get from her when she's in bloom like this. So last year, 
I would say I was minus four canes. They did bloom for me, but the blooms didn't last very long. The canes had snapped at the base also from a storm. And uh, certainly I did not have this massive show. They are packed so tightly up against each other and yet each and every one finds a way to bloom out and not get squashed by the other one. I have been so lucky about the whole wind situation because a lot of wind can also knock the buds off. I've lost approximately four or five buds, but when you look at the whole spectacle, the whole entire thing, oh, I'm so happy that she made it. I've also tied her to the pillar because there's no way I was going to let that gate slam open with the volatile winds that we've had. Are you still with me? <laughs> This bloom is already going over. The show doesn't last long, but my goodness, while it's around, I find it hard to choose between tortilla with its nutty, wacky, curly-whirly, all-over-the-place kind of symmetry mess. That It's an oxymoron, what I just said, but you know what I mean. This elegance, this elegance of symmetry of sorts. I, I don't know how else to describe it, but oh my goodness, are you still with me? <laughs> I don't know if this is our showstopper. I don't want to influence anybody, but I, I don't know. Philem and I, we just, mm. you guys, I am absolutely mesmerized. It is way past midnight, but this, there's just nothing else I can say except thank you so very, very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our little snoop around the orchids at night our little midnight snack of orchid blooms to all the night owls out there. I appreciate your support so very, very much. Thank you. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, though, that you please stay safe and take care. Bye. <coughs>